Allylic CH bonds are relatively weak because allylic radicals are relatively stable. This gives us the idea that brominating at an allylic position should be relatively easy, just using Br2 and light. For example, if we look at the bond dissociation energies in cyclohexene, we see that the weakest bond here is actually the CH bond that is allylic, adjacent to the carbon-carbon double bond. There's a problem with this idea, though, and the problem is we already know what happens when we mix an alkene with Br2. Ionic bromination, halogenation of the alkene is what's going to take place via a halonium ion, anti-stereospecific, all that fun stuff. So if we tried to treat cyclohexene with Br2, even in the presence of light, we're going to get mostly this, the product of ionic halogenation, brom uh, bromination of the alkene. And this is not what we're looking for if we're looking for substitution of the allylic CH for a bromine. To get around this, what we really need is a low enough concentration of Br2 that ionic bromination is very slow, but we can still generate some bromine radicals under the conditions and initiate halogenation at the allylic position. And the reagent that does the magic is called n bromo or NBS for short. NBS actually generates a small concentration of Br2 and light is used to cleave that Br2 to uh, bromine radicals. And then we have a typical mechanism of alkane halogenation that's occurring selectively at an allylic position since the allylic radical is relatively stable. So mechanistically here, bromine is generated in the initiation stage from NBS and light. And as usual, the bromine abstracts a hydrogen. It's going to abstract at an allylic carbon selectively, right? Because this is going to lead to a resonance stabilized carbocation. So I won't draw the alternative resonance forms, but you can see that radical character here is delocalized in the two ends of this allylic system. And to sort of finish off propagation, we're going to abstract a bromine from Br2. This generates a new bromine radical and the product, which is an allylic bromide, a compound in which we have a carbon-bromine bond adjacent to a carbon-carbon double bond. And this is the typical propagation pathway for alkane halogenation just happening at an allylic position. Now, allylic radicals can be a little bit tricky because the two ends of the allyl system may not be equivalent, but both have radical character and both can abstract bromine and, and get halogenated. So mixtures of products in this reaction are quite common. This profoundly limits its utility in practice, unfortunately. For example, this compound looks appealing for allylic halogenation because I have a CH bond here that is indeed allylic. Abstraction of that hydrogen leads to this allylic radical and it has two resonance forms, one with the radical character here and one with the radical character here. And these two carbons pretty clearly are not equivalent, right? This one is a CH2, this one is fully substituted, and this would lead to two isomeric alkyl bromides upon halogen abstraction from Br2. So for example, we get a tertiary alkyl bromide if, if um, the more substituted carbon reacts, if the less substituted carbon reacts, we get a primary alkyl bromide. And unfortunately here, there's often very little selectivity uh, because the radical is extremely reactive even despite the resonance stabilization. So we're going to get a mixture of products here. They're often very difficult to separate because they're highly similar. This makes the reaction somewhat limited. However, for symmetric substrates like cyclohexene, where the two allylic carbons are equivalent, allylic bromination can be highly useful to install a good leaving group on an otherwise pretty unreactive starting alkene. So now we have opened the possibility of SN2 reactions, elimination to establish another double bond, etc. When an alkene is treated with HBr, we've previous, previously seen that Markovnikov hydrohalogenation takes place with the bromine ending up linked to the more substituted carbon and the hydrogen ending up linked to the less substituted carbon. The mechanistic explanation for this has to do with the carbocation intermediate involved in the reaction. This reaction goes through the more substituted and more stable carbocation intermediate, and the halide anion attacks that more substituted carbocation to give the more substituted alkyl bromide product. But if we mix in a little bit of a radical generating species, such as a peroxide, with the HBr and alkene, 
a different regiochemical outcome is observed. And this was observed by Markovnikov way, way, way back in the day and led to quite a bit of confusion concerning these hydrobrominations of alkenes back in the day. There's a little bit of a radical initiator in there. We observed the anti-Markovnikov hydrobromination with bromine linked to the less substituted position and hydrogen to the more substituted carbon. So this is interesting. Apparently by introducing radicals we can cause a regiochemical switch to take place. Highly useful synthetically, right? We can get one bromide or the other depending on whether we exclude or include radicals under the reaction conditions. And a radical mechanism is likely here because the peroxide contains a weak oxygen-oxygen bond and other radical initiators can cause similar reactivity. And so we're likely to have radicals within the reaction mixture and as we'll see once we dig into the mechanism in detail, a radical mechanism explains this regioselectivity, explains why the bromine ends up linked to the less substituted position. We can use the mechanism of radical hydrobromination of alkenes to explain this regiochemical outcome, the anti-Markovnikov outcome. And it's a radical chain mechanism, most likely. So the initiator cleaves homolytically to create radicals first, for example, two uh, alkoxy radicals like this, and then the alkoxy radical can abstract a hydrogen from hydrogen bromide to create bromine radical or bromine atom, which is the sort of active propagating radical in the propagation stage. The first step of propagation is addition of the bromine radical to the alkene. Addition of the radical to the alkene creates a carbon radical with a bromine linked to the carbon adjacent to the radical center. Once this has happened to regenerate a new bromine radical and generate the product, the carbon radical abstracts a hydrogen from the hydrogen bromide reactant. Now, backing up a second here, this addition could occur in two ways. The way we depicted it here, bromine adds to the less substituted carbon, creating the more substituted radical. It could also occur with bromine addition to the more substituted position, forming the less substituted radical. But this is not observed, as we see in gray here. Only the secondary radical derived from bromine addition at the less substituted carbon is observed. And this is because the more substituted radical is more stable, right? Bromine adds to create the more stable reactive intermediate. In this step, this leads ultimately to the alkyl bromide product with bromine linked to the less substituted position. Now let's contrast this with what happens under ionic bromination conditions with the carbocation. In that mechanism, we don't observe any of the primary carbocation that would come about via proton transfer to the more substituted position. The proton is transferred to the less substituted position to create the more substituted carbocation intermediate. No primary carbocations observed in this mechanism, and so ultimately we get the secondary alkyl bromide product at the end of this mechanism. The key difference, so in both cases, we see the more stable reactive intermediate is generated in this key step, and this leads to the regiochemical outcome, it explains the regiochemical outcome. But the key difference between the radical mechanism and the ionic mechanism is, in that key step, bromine adds in the radical mechanism right here. The bromine adds first, putting the radical at the more substituted position. In the ionic mechanism, hydrogen adds first as a proton, putting the cation at the more substituted position. And this difference creates the regiochemical switch in going from the ionic mechanism or ionic conditions to the radical conditions. This slide really just emphasizes this point, that the key intermediate in the ionic mechanism is this carbocation derived from proton transfer. That's going to be more substituted in the favored pathway, and this puts the halide, or halogen, at the more substituted position. In the radical mechanism, the key intermediate is a radical derived from addition of the halogen first. And so hydrogen will end up at this radical center after a hydrogen abstraction step, right? And the halogen ends up at the less substituted position. But in both cases, and this is a pretty general idea for organic chemistry, the favored reaction pathway involves the lower energy or more stable reactive inter intermediate. Here we're asked to predict the products for each of these reactions, drawing all expected stereoisomers. We didn't touch on stereochemistry, but as in hydrobrominations under ionic conditions, 
Radical hydrobrominations can potentially create new stereocenters, and we want to watch out for that. So in each case, we've got HBr and a peroxide initiator, so we're looking at a radical mechanism. And to think about what radical gets generated, keep in mind that key first step of propagation, the addition of bromine atom or bromine radical to the less substituted carbon of the alkene. For example, in this first case, we're going to get this more substituted radical with radical character on that more substituted carbon of the alkene via addition of bromine to the less substituted carbon. And in the second step of propagation, that carbon radical abstracts a hydrogen from HBr. So we'll end up with a hydrogen linked to the more substituted position and bromine to the less substituted position. Now, this creates a stereocenter, right? I have an H, methyl, ethyl and CH2Br group, and so this carbon is a stereogenic center, so we're going to get this plus the enantiomer of this as a racemic mixture since this cation, uh, the cation since this radical is uh, planar, right? And so we'll get equal amounts of approach of HBr above and below this radical. In the second case, we've got a similar idea. Bromine's going to add to the less substituted carbon of the alkene, putting a radical at the more substituted position, and we'll end up with bromine here and a hydrogen here. And this will occur via this radical intermediate right here, and the final product will look like this. Now, the carbon that bonds to H is actually not a stereocenter since this five-membered ring kind of acts like two equivalent substituents. But the carbon that picks up the bromine does become a stereogenic center. So we'll get this plus the enantiomer with the bromine, for example, on a dash rather than a wedge with the opposite configuration at this stereocenter. And we'll get a racemic mixture of those two enantiomers. So practically speaking, radical hydrobromination works a lot like ionic hydrobromination. H and Br are added to the alkene, but with the opposite Regio selectivity from what we've previously observed, anti Markovnikov rather than Markovnikov. One last quick note here about the thermodynamics of radical hydrohalogenations. Radical additions for HCl and HI are actually thermodynamically forbidden, so only HBr can be used in these radical hydrohalogenation reactions. In reactions of HI, this first propagation step where iodine atom adds to the alkene is prohibitively endothermic. The iodine radical is just kind of too stable itself and doesn't really want to add to the alkene. In the case of uh, hydrochlorinations, it's the second propagation step, the abstraction of an H from HCl that is prohibitively endothermic. And, and here again, the HCl bond is just so strong that this hydrogen abstraction to create the, uh, the product in a chlorine atom or chlorine radical is just too endothermic. The reaction is not thermodynamically favored. So only hydrobromination can be done under radical conditions.